Still visit my ex-boyfriend. He used to be a total bore, but he was cute and good-hearted. I was ready to put off his plans and help friends. I was willing to advise. He used to speak passionately about programming, but before long this good guy had to go. There was only a bore left sitting in front of the screen. He didn't finish his fourth university year, and soon he left his job in the office. His online work lasted a bit longer, but in the end he abandoned that as well. He dwells in a decrepit flat in a bad neighborhood, a generous gift from his parents. They're quite rich, so I guess it's not a problem. That's how he lives. Alone. No job. No friends. No interests. Only endless arguments with people on the net. Well, I'm not really sure if they're even people or not. How else can anyone be stuck there for that long? It's possible he's been desperately arguing with bots, algorithms, simulating neural networks. All in all, I felt a kind of responsibility for his situation. Some time ago, I decided to be close to him. Funny, I don't hold on to the past, but to my decisions. The last time I was there, he was staring at his screen, even more languid, pale, and thin than usual. Sometimes it seemed like his outline was starting to blur, just like a ghost. A rough sketch of the fabric of reality. He was unusually nice when having a free moment from the screen. He even gave me an envelope containing cash for my birthday, which was last month. The sum was quite significant, and the best explanation from him was a shrug of his shoulders. Nothing. Just found my thing. It's been over a month since then. I'm here visiting him again. Same elevator, still out of service, the same stairs, same music in my headphones, dim and deep yet beautifully doomed metal, a great fit for this old hall. He replied, okay, to my message about visiting. I pressed the doorbell. Takes some strength like the bell hasn't been used for some time. Nothing. He's not home? Weird. I can't imagine him being outside. What was that? Him? Again? I'm coming over in two hours, yeah. Come in. Door's open. Wait, in the living room. Busy at the moment. What? He didn't forget how to walk, did he? There was a certain SP episode. Suddenly I'm not keen to come inside. I pull the handle. Door opens heavily and creaking. The hall isn't lit. The doors to the living room and kitchen are open. I can see in the dark that his bedroom door, wooden, with no glass parts, is shut tight. I hit the switch. I was afraid his power had been cut, but the light comes on, revealing the floor covered in dust balls. Silly me. He lives online, of course he pays for the electricity. I take off my shoes and enter the living room. Silence. There's no light coming from under his bedroom door. Instinctively, I reach for the switch and hit it. Fixture flickers as the light comes on. Seems I still remember where things are here. The dust is more noticeable under the light. I'm glad he doesn't have any plants. They would have withered a long time ago. Wait, I don't recall this lock on the door. It's easily seen under this light. Looks like the newest thing in here. I couldn't have entered even if I wanted to. Somehow, I'm not too crazy about this. <sighs> Sorry, you're not going outside. Let's talk like this. Great. Just great. I saw a situation like this in a movie. It didn't end well. Fine. I'll reply. Why aren't you coming out? You won't like how I look. Don't want to frighten you. Really? Because he already failed. What's wrong? Is there something I shouldn't see? Haven't showered or had a haircut for some time. My lifestyles had an impact on my body. Flesh is weak. I can't decide if I want to run or argue. I told him his solitude would drive him mad. His messages seem to have been stolen from poorly written songs. Wait, he never listened to music. Stop. Why don't you want to talk normally? Can't you move your tongue? Glad you came. I left you a gift as thanks. 
the white envelope on the drawer. Please take it. There's a gift and a note. I take a look at the drawer on the wall. The envelope is here, and the only thing not covered in dust. Is it money again? I don't like this. Should I just go? No, I want to show, no, know what's going on. Maybe there's something else in his room, or no one at all. It's not grounds to call the police yet, but he's been so strange the last few years, he could have easily gone mad. He could be dangerous. No, I can't leave. I can't abandon him like this. But I'll grab a knife, just in case. I try to coax him out of his room. Right. I quietly enter the kitchen, typing a message. You didn't answer my question. Why are you being like this? His reply comes as I pick up a knife. Even the kitchen looks abandoned. I haven't spoken to anyone for a long time. I feel uneasy. There's no going back now. I have the knife behind my back. Okay, let's do it this way. If you come out, I'll take the envelope. Deal, but take the envelope first. If you do, I'll come out. I don't want to take it, but when he comes out, he'll see the envelope is still there. I could hide it somewhere, but that's risky. Gosh, just take the stupid envelope. It's just cash, that's all. I put the envelope in my bag, holding the knife in my other hand. Not very convenient. I have it. Fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. Well, surprise me. Oh, I step back. Knife falls out of my hands. I hear a mechanical voice. I told you wouldn't like it. I start to back away. He stands there in the doorway. The longer I look, the more blurred his outline is and the clearer his mouth and eyes are. I turn and run. As I leave the apartment, I glance back. I only just see his mouth and a pair of eyes. I don't remember returning home. I must have immediately fallen asleep. That's how my body manages stress and dreams full of anxiety. I saw my eyes and mouth. Without a body, it was probably too much for me. Because I don't usually dream. It's been a day since I visited my ex. Or the thing in his apartment. What was it? A prank? Did someone put on a silly mask with a lightning trick? Was I hallucinating or... Damn, I don't know how to approach this. What do I do? I don't know how to carry on when such things happen. I want to hurl up in a cuddle. The this is why I tend to act impulsively, just to avoid anxiety. Perhaps my future actions will be just as impulsive. I used to teach... I used to believe that this is better to know. In these situations, it's best to start with a conversation. What happened yesterday? Answer came immediately. I'm glad you texted me. Have you opened the envelope? What a douchebag. Don't change the subject. I don't know what to say. Think harder then. Okay, what happened to your body? Why is he taking so long? This is the side effect of the ascension. The hell are you talking about? What ascension? Where? I've been in a ton of arguments online. I met someone there. We started a mutually profitable partnership. I provide them with food, and in return, they help me transform and solve some issues. They will probably reach out to you soon. They enjoyed our chat. Well then, what do you mean? What the hell? I wanted to show you my gratitude. You didn't leave me. I'm thankful for my parents, too. They probably didn't care, but my family was still giving me money as support. And when they found me, my financial issues were solved. The envelope is the smallest thing I could do for you. I wish you a good ascension as well. Believe in the net. What the... Fudge? You're not leaving, are you? There was no reply. I'm talking to you. There was no reply. A couple of weeks have passed. Hello? What? How? I see. So the funeral is this Saturday, right. I will come. Goodbye. 
I didn't say sorry to anyone. His mother's voice was so stoic, stoic, I was afraid even a formal condolence would be inappropriate. It didn't seem like it came as a surprise to her. I know how she feels. Even that prank or whatever it was is now easier to understand. He wanted to have some fun at the end. He decided long ago that there was nothing else to lose. Left a death note and found a place to die, just like a cat. Of course, there's a chance he ran away and the faded body found in the dump near his house was not him, but to him, suicide was his escape. He lost the ability to be around people, unless it's somehow related to that dull job he was referencing ever so vaguely. Ugh. Perhaps I need to pay my respects and see what he put in the farewell envelope. And all honestly, I put it away because it was a reminder of that creepy scene. In my mind, the story with my ex is over. I can, with no heavy emotion troubling me, delve into the mystery. That sense of completion enables me to detach. Perhaps there'll even be some nostalgia. I take the envelope from a drawer. The glued paper is easy to open, as if it's been waiting for me. Some fresh 500 pound notes and a piece of white paper. Last time, it was only money. A considerably smaller sum at that. I turn the paper over. There's some text on the back. Believe in the net. And below it's a SIM card. Of course, this doesn't bode well. But what's the worst that could happen? Conveniently, I have a free slot of, for a SIM card. It's okay if something bad happens to my phone. I was going to get a new one anyway. Well, so let's review. I remove the SIM card from the paper and put it on my phone. The provider is displayed as the EU Food Net. Could be some sort of viral marketing. Was it them he worked for? I try pound 100 hashtag. Weird. Nothing bad so far. Whatever then. I put the phone and money away. I go to my PC to scroll through Twitter and find materials for work. Well, mostly to check Twitter. Suddenly I receive an IM from my ex. Glad you opened the envelope with the SIM card. The process will be much quicker. What? That's not funny. The SIM card must have triggered his final prank. A message from a dead ex-boyfriend. A sick joke. This will make a great tweet, although I usually avoid writing about my personal life. Nevertheless, the world needs to see his masterpiece. Just got a message from a dead ex-boyfriend. A sick joke. I wasn't wrong. The tweet soon went viral. But I forgot what kinds of people reply to tweets. At empty body that joke is stolen at believe ha <laughs> come and see such an attention horror pics or didn't happen what another geek girl you're not impressing anyone my dear try harder you're so fucking dumb you must be a femme nice story about a dead ex we live in a society <laughs> it's nothing new but something somehow this got to me especially at Mouthful of Dark's tweet, which drove me up the wall. What alternative logic led you to believe I'm a femme? Who else would be joking about men dying? They must have gone complete bonkers. Several hours passed and I barely noticed. Never knew people were joining the argument. New misconceptions, new misrepresentations, new white knights and trolls. I know it was a stupid waste of time, but it was really hard to stop. Another opponent will bite the dust under celebratory cheers of the crowd. Is this how gladiators felt too? Not sure about gladiators, but this must be what my ex felt. People argue with strangers to get the slightest semblance of feeling. You're not evil, writing terrible insults to get the smallest reaction. A validation of their achievements. Join us. I don't like the idea of becoming that eternal life. On the other hand, you only need to take in moderation. Online communication, whatever anyone says. Can you help offline? You can learn good lessons. It's also interesting to compare people online in real life. Uh, net has, in one's essence, I would say, all that remains in text, devoid of annotation. Text only representation of thoughts and feelings. That's what I find interesting about it, but still, stop. What is this? Bloody hell! I jump away from the screen and unplug the PC. What the devil? That's when I catch a glimpse of my reflection. I scream. 
Oh, I got goosebumps. I run to the phone and take out the sim, throw it on the floor and crush it. I put the remnants of some paper in a cup and set it on fire. It smells terrible, but I don't care. There are only ashes left. I throw them in a trash duct. I get rid of my PC along with all of his data. I start collecting work materials from scratch on a new PC. I want to throw the money away, but I'd rather donate it to the church. The next day, my reflection was back to normal. A day completely offline. But after a few months, I think I'm ready to return to Twitter. I even created a new account at my endless song and after everything that happened I know this is silly but I must talking to my mutuals I miss having a place to share my thoughts and get feedback in the end I forced myself to go to the funeral a sight as pitiful as his last years not sure if I'm going to visit Max's grave that was it what the fuck Alright, whatever.